Hello, my name is Humair Ahmed, and in this video, I'm going to walk through Cloudflare Cache Reserve and follow up with the demo. I will very briefly discuss some basics on Cloudflare CDN before getting right into Cache Reserve to provide a better grasp of how everything fits together. However, I'll keep this very minimal so I can focus on Cache Reserve. For a more thorough understanding of Cloudflare CDN in general and how it works, please see the Cloudflare CDN reference architecture in the prior video I did on Cloudflare CDN walkthrough. With that, let's get going. First, let's talk about how easily you can get started and onboarded onto Cloudflare CDN. From the dashboard, simply click Add Site and enter your domain. Cloudflare can automatically import your DNS records from your existing DNS provider. And finally, you're given Cloudflare name servers you can use to change your authoritative DNS. So here you're using Cloudflare's DNS as your authoritative DNS and also onboarded onto Cloudflare CDN. Now, if you don't want to change your primary or authoritative DNS, you can still use Cloudflare CDN by simply doing a partial CNAME setup. So lots of flexibility there. So if we look at the very basics of the traffic flow now, first HTTP request is made. Closest data center to user handles the request. User's HTTP request URL is matched against a list of cacheable file extensions. If the request matches an extension on the list, Cloudflare serves the resource from cache if present. Second, content is fetched from cache or origin. Cloudflare examines its caches in multiple network locations for content and serves it if present. If the content is stale in Cloudflare's cache, Cloudflare attempts to revalidate the content with the origin before serving the response to the client. If the resource is not present in the cache, Cloudflare requests the resource from the origin to fill the cache and the response is then sent to the client who initiated the request. If cacheable, content is cached on the response. So Cloudflare's cache logic examines the HTTP response received from the origin. The response is either deemed cacheable and written to disk for use with the next request for the same resource or the request is deemed uncacheable. Now, let's take a look at the traffic flow with Cloudflare tiered cache with smart tiered cache topology enabled. As a reminder, tiered cache divides Cloudflare's network of global data centers into a hierarchy of upper tiers and lower tiers. And in order to control bandwidth and number of connections between an origin and Cloudflare, only upper tiers are permitted to request content from an origin and are responsible for distributing information to the lower tiers. Smart tiered cache topology is the default topology and available for free for all plans. This is also recommended for most deployments, instructing Cloudflare to find the single best upper tiers for your origins. Benefits here include improved bandwidth efficiency, reduced origin load, and making websites more cost-effective to operate. So when Client1 sends a request to the closest data center, data center 1 here, if the content is not cached, the upper tier data center labeled data center 3 here is checked. If the content is not cached at the upper tier, the upper tier requests the content from the origin. Once the response is returned from the origin, the upper tier caches it and returns a response to the lower tier, which also caches it and returns a response to the client. Now, let's say client 2 makes the same request for the same content to its closest data center, data center 2. If the content is not cached at data center 2, similar to prior, the upper tier data center is checked. However, in this case, content was requested prior via client 1 and the upper tier data center has the content cached and returns the cached content to the lower tier data center, data center 2, which in turn caches the content and responds back to the client, decreasing latency, saving bandwidth and load on the server and providing better overall performance. So now that we have a better understanding of Cloudflare CDN, when does a cache miss occur? Well, we have two scenarios. First, intentional, cache TTL expired or content purged. Customers set cache control time to signify when the content is out of date and needs to be revalidated. Once expired, content needs to be revalidated and may need to be pulled from the origin if updated version exists. Customers can purge content manually at any time. Second, unintentional, Cloudflare purge content due to LRU or least recently used algorithm. To optimize storage, less frequently accessed content may be purged based on LRU or how long the network wants content to remain cached. Now, this is where Cloudflare Cache Reserve can be useful to further increase cache hit ratio 
by automatically storing all cacheable files into Cloudflare's persistent object storage buckets. Basically, Cache Reserve acts like an ultimate upper tier, and when there's a cache miss, Cloudflare will first check these storage buckets before going to the origin. You can see here, I've enabled it, and I'll walk through this more in the demo. So let's look at the traffic flow now. Again, when the client sends a request to the lower tier data center, if the content is not cached, the upper tier data center is checked. This time, however, if the content is not cached at the upper tier, the upper tier checks cache reserve instead of requesting straight from the origin. If the content is not present in cache reserve, cache reserve will request it from the origin. Once the response is returned from the origin, cache reserve caches the content while replying to the upper tier, which also caches it, and returns the response to the lower tier, which also caches it and responds to the client. Now, next time the same content is requested, if there is a cache miss at the lower tier data center, the upper tier data center is checked. Now, if there is, say, a cache miss at the upper tier data center, let's say expired TTL or content has been evicted, cache reserve will be checked. And if content exists at cache reserve, it will be returned and cached at the upper tier before being returned and cached at the lower tier and returned to the client. So you can see here how cache reserve acts as the ultimate upper tier and minimizes the need to pull from the origin, decreasing unnecessary egress fees. With that, let's jump into the demo. For demonstration purposes, I deployed a site here that's basically a large image and video gallery for uploading and downloading content. Now, again, for demonstration purposes, the website is actually hosted on a third-party cloud. I also have automated traffic running to simulate visitors accessing the site. So now I'm going to go over and head over to my uh, Cloudflare dashboard. And here you can see I have cache reserve enabled and it shows the current amount of data stored in cache reserve as well as the total aggregate storage used over the specific time period. And you also have a view of total cache reserve read and write operations. Once enabled, Cache Reserve will start caching files with a retention period of 30 days, which will be reset on any hits. Customers can also pause using Cache Reserve, meaning Cloudflare's network will no longer use Cache Reserve to serve data. Here under Overview, you can see the overall cache status, including content served by Cloudflare and content served by the origin. You can see the vast majority of requests are served by Cloudflare. And if you scroll down here and hover over the cache status, you can see a 92.96% cache hit ratio. Really good. Now, since I just enabled cache reserve a few days ago, if I go up here instead of 24 hours, I select previous 30 days, we can see the cache hit ratio was lower at around 80%. So cash reserve really helped get into that 90% plus ratio, getting us closer and closer to that 100%. And scrolling down here, you can see more overall caching details in general, like the most popular content types and what specific content is the most popular. Here on the left, you can also purge the cache, which will also purge content in cash reserve. You can also create page rules to get more granular on any specific caching behavior. Let's go into this and take a look at in more detail. You can see I created a page rule matching on all requests that contain this specific domain name. And I set the cache level to cache everything that's cacheable, but also can select a different cache level, including bypassing cache if desired. So now I'm going to head over to caching and look at cache rules. So under cache rules, I can also create a rule, as I did here, to override TTLs from cache control headers. This is done right at the edge, and you can see here, if I click into it, all requests to this host name, I've configured as content eligible for caching, and overridden the origin TTL, setting it to 12 hours. With Cloudflare Edge TTL, it makes it very convenient to set TTL in one place for all assets. Now I'm going to head over to Analytics and Logs here, and I'll go under Logs, you can see I've set up a log push. I'm just going to click edit here. Last thing I want to show here is you can also log data to external logs and include the cache reserve used field to get more visibility into requests and respective content being served from cache reserve. I hope you found this Cloudflare cache reserve walkthrough and demo informational and useful. For additional details, make sure to check out the Cloudflare cache reserve product page.